Welcome to Brainish English Stories. The very smart doctor sat at his desk, ready to listen. He looked at his new patient, a tall, blonde woman. She seemed used to people paying attention to her. Even before she took off her warm clothes and put her hands in her muff, the doctor could tell from the corner of his eye that her problem wasn't about her own nerves. The woman, Mrs. Royce, started to talk slowly. She talked about her family, her husband and her four kids, three little boys and one older daughter who was 17. I've only been thinking about my kids, Dr. Depard. Just your kids, Mrs. Royce? Yes, she agreed. Her daughter was the issue, the 17-year-old. We've always been close, my daughter and I. I've been like a friend to my kids, not just a parent. I've been interested in Celia's clothes and parties just as much as she has. But lately, she's been rebellious. I've tried to understand, but there are some things I can't ignore, like manners and behavior. It's embarrassing to say, but our relationship has become distant. It might seem strange between a mother and daughter. He shook his head. Lots of moms and daughters have rocky relationships. Oh, today's young people, she sighed. What's wrong with them with this time, Dr. Depard? They're so tough, so focused on themselves. I grew up in a big family living with my grandparents and aunts. I happily did chores for them without question. But now if I ask Celia to do something, she acts like she's suffering or rebels. And sometimes, her language to me is really bad. I think it's not normal. A good girl doesn't swear at her mom, and my daughter is a good girl. Mrs. Royce smiled. Dr. Depard thought Mrs. Royce must be a very nice mom. She was gentle, serious, and motherly, which matched his own ideas about family. And your husband, he asked. How does he get along with his daughter? They get along great, she said warmly. They hardly spend time together. He looked at her quickly to see if she was joking, but her smile seemed serious. So he replied seriously, too. That often helps. They decided he would visit them in the countryside for a few days. Bringing the girl to his office wouldn't work. He expected to find her calm and polite, maybe too interested in her books. The kids had to be in town for school during the week, but they spent weekends at their old home by the Hudson River. Depard promised to visit there soon. She thanked him and shook his hand firmly. After she left, he couldn't understand why a girl would swear at such a kind and smart mom. He thought Mrs. Royce was clever for bringing the problem to him, instead of getting mad or upset like most people would. He didn't really care much for young people. He didn't find them interesting, his own nieces and nephews didn't make him feel lonely. Instead, they made him enjoy being alone even more. Before he saw his next patient, he thought about how much parents sacrifice for their kids. It's incredible. It's too much, he thought. He smiled, imagining if he had kids, they might be taking him to see a doctor now. And he'd probably be the first to get angry. After a busy week dealing with other people's problems, Depard arrived at the Royce's place on a sunny day in early April. 
He thought he'd never seen such peace before. There was a lush green lawn sloping down to the river, surrounded by beautiful old trees. The sturdy stone house was built for comfort a long time ago. Mr. Royce met him at the station. He seemed calm, like his ancestors had been fairy godparents, giving him a good body, enough money, a respected name, and a strong belief in things like marriage, following rules, and being a good parent. Depard asked about the daughter but realized he was just hearing Mrs. Royce's thoughts repeated. The girl's in a strange state of mind, her father said. You noticed this on your own? Depard asked. Well, mostly from my wife's observations. I leave that stuff to her. She has a lot on her plate, lots of worries. She takes life very seriously, he sighed. Then, his face brightened as he pointed out a big chestnut tree that had been saved from a disease. He talked passionately about it for a few minutes. Depard saw that Mr. Royce knew a lot about trees. I've thought about writing a book about it, he said shyly. You definitely should. Depard encouraged. It's hard to find time, Mr. Royce said sadly. Depard smiled. If this guy didn't have time, who did? He himself was always busy, working on his third book with no free time. At lunch, Depard met the whole family, a quiet German nanny, three little boys, and Celia, who had a sweet smile but looked unhappy. Depard, who hadn't eaten breakfast, thought a lot about the delicious food in front of him. He believed any family would be happy with such simple and tasty food. His opinion of Mrs. Royce went even higher. In the next hour, he realized that despite knowing a lot about American homes, He'd never been in such a well-organized house before. It was clear that Mrs. Royce, a wise and caring person, managed every detail. She knew everything about her home, even her flowers, vases, and where to put them for the best look. She knew more about her husband's preferences than he did. She even thought about what a tired doctor like him might need, giving him a quiet room with a view of the river. In this room, which was actually quite spacious, he went to the writing table to make a note. He'd been in fancy houses before where there was nothing useful in the guest room, but not here. The ink was fresh and green, and the blotting paper soaked it up eagerly. He also saw different sizes of paper, envelopes, cable forms, and stamps of all kinds. Depard usually didn't pay attention to details like this, but now it amused him. He knew about luxury, but this thoughtful care was even better.